What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out Putin's remarks about Trump, USA and China. Let's get to it. When we asked you whether you had decided to participate in the presidential elections, you said that you had not yet. Now there are six months left before the elections. Are you still wondering? According to the law, our parliament must make a decision at the end of the year. When the decision is made, when the elections are announced, the date is named. Then we will talk about it. Okay, then we can ask you about it again. Then I'll ask you about the US presidential elections. What do you expect from them? They will so Putin might not run for election in Russia anymore, which would mean at the end of the year, there's a possibility he will not be president. I want to understand that. Russians, please explain. I don't, I don't get that. Three years ago, when we asked you whether you had decided to participate in the presidential elections, you said that you had not yet. Now there are six months left before the elections. Are you still wondering? According to the law, our parliament must make a decision at the end of the year. When the decision is made, when the elections are announced, the date is named. Then we will talk about it. Okay, mm. then we can ask you about it again. Then I'll ask you about the US presidential elections. What do you expect from them? They will start next year. Moreover, quite strange things are happening there now. And we understand that Trump could be arrested at any moment. Why should we think about this? I think that there will be no fundamental changes in the Russian direction in US foreign policy no matter who is elected president there, but we hear that Mr. Trump says that in a few days he will solve all pressing problems, including the Ukrainian crisis. Well, this cannot but please. This is good. But, by the way, by and large, even though they accused him of having special ties with Russia, this is complete nonsense, and this is bullshit. He said bullshit or was it the translation? How do you say bullshit in Russian? <laughs> it's so, not so black. Yeah, how do you say bullshit in Russian? Did Putin say bullshit? Especially when in a formal setting. But, by the way, by and large, even though they accused him of having special ties with Russia, this is complete nonsense and this is bullshit. But he imposed the most sanctions on Russia while being president. Therefore, it is difficult for us to say what to expect from the new, from the future president of the United States, no matter who the president is, but it is unlikely that anything will change radically. Because the current authorities have set American society in an anti-Russian vein and in an anti-Russian spirit. That's what it's all about. They did it. And now it will be very difficult for them to somehow turn this whole ship in the other direction. This is the first one. Second, they view Russia as an existential, permanent adversary or even enemy, and they hammer that into the minds of the average American. This is bad because it sets up society, although, despite this, we have a lot of people in America who want to build good, friendly, business relations with us and, moreover, who share many of our positions, primarily, of course, from the point of view of preserving the so-called traditional values. And we have many friends there and many like-minded people, but, of course, they suppress them, therefore, we do not know who will be elected there. But no matter who is elected there, as I have already said, the vector of the US anti-Russian policy is unlikely to change. Excuse me, as for the prosecution of Trump, of course, for us, what is happening there, in today's conditions, in my opinion, is good. Why? Because it shows the rottenness of the American political system. It shows the rottenness of the American political system. Which cannot pretend to teach others about democracy. All that is happening with Trump is the persecution of his political rival for political reasons. Hmm. That's what it is. And this is done in front of the public eyes of the United States and the whole world. They simply expose their internal problems. And, in this sense, if they try to fight us, it's good because it shows who is fighting us. As we said back in Soviet times, 
This shows the bestial appearance of American imperialism, yes, bestial grin. We remember this. Everything related to relations between Russia and the West is related to the geopolitical interests of Western countries and attacks in all directions, including in the spiritual sphere, are a continuation of this geopolitical confrontation. Of course, the West has long sought, say, to Catholicize Russia, to drag it there, under the Holy See. And when they failed, then they began to look for various tools to present our country as some kind of evil empire. Although Reagan said this, but in practice, this has all been happening since the Middle Ages and maybe time. earlier. As soon as Russia became stronger, it became a real geopolitical competitor, namely a competitor. Then the policy of containing Russia immediately began. Just as today the West is trying to restrain the development of China because it sees that China is a comparison. Under the leadership of the CPC and under the leadership of our friend and chairman of the People's Republic of China, is developing by leaps and bounds. He calls Xi Jinping friend. Remember in the video we had seen how um, I think Ramaswamy said he was going to give Russia a good deal so they can dissociate from the enemy China. But I said in that video that what if it's already too late? What if Russia has built a a long-standing relationship already because if you notice in Putin's words he said our friend and chairman friend is the key word right there so that's what I'm saying when you make statements like that on the on a stage it's, it's nice and appealing to hear but can you actually you know execute what you say because Russia and China they are constantly building relationships from trade and you know other different things there's even a city, we saw a city in China that is modeled after a Russian, you know, a Russian city or Russian culture, a city in China. So that kind of relationship, can you alter it by your policies or giving, um, you know, putting a nice deal? It's quite unlikely, but we'll see, you know, we'll see if you can do it. This shocks them. And they do everything to slow down China's development, but they will not be able to do this. They were late. That's all. The train has left. This is an objective process. And it's not just about China. This is also the case in India. For example, in Indonesia, new centers of power will develop. And what some Western countries, led by the United States, are doing, these attempts at containment will only harm them. Can you tell us a secret? Do you remember when Xi Jinping came? I don't reveal secrets. I worked in the KGB before. Okay, <laughs> then please share the information. If possible, Xi Jinping came. And we all remember that video when you said goodbye to him. And he said, we've started a change. That hasn't happened in 100 years. What did he mean? Well, you know, we talked to him face to face. We talked for four hours. There were a lot of nuances and details. I can only say that we have indeed reached an unprecedented level of our relations in recent years. This applies to all areas of our interaction. We met with the Chinese delegation today and According to Chinese statistics, the volume of trade turnover is even greater than according to our statistics. We have every chance. I don't know whether it will work out or not. There are all sorts of conditions, both price and currency. We need to see how this will influence. But maybe even this year we will reach a trade turnover of 200 billions of dollars. Even specific numbers are not important. The important thing is that we are actively developing our cooperation. 
We have truly amazing relations in the field of international security and coordination of our positions. We act in each other's interests. We try to listen to each other in many important areas. And listen. And hear. And react both at the government level. And at the level of heads of state. At the ministerial level. Through security agencies and through military agencies. Our cooperation has reached unprecedented levels. But the following is interesting. We do not create military alliances. And we are not friends against anyone. Mm. We are friends in the interests of our peoples. Key word, you said we are not friends, we are not friends against anyone. So we do not create military alliance. That's, that's important. That's very, very important right there. So they are not coming together to fight anyone. Russia and China are not coming together to fight anyone, but they are coming together to better their own countries. Yeah. Okay. This is how we will continue to work. Mm -hmm. This all sounds great about relations with China, but there are also some problems. Mm -hmm. I talk to businessmen. What they're saying, for example, China is in no hurry to open production in Russia. It is mainly ready to supply only finished products. The Chinese domestic market for our non-commodity goods cannot be called open. In addition, we do not see demand from Chinese investors for Russian capital market instruments. Why is this happening? Well, you know, China is an independent country and, first of all, China proceeds from its own interests. And we also do the same in our own interests. It is wrong to say that we do not respond to each other's requests. Now, there is one such sensitive moment as the opening of the Chinese market for our coal miners. For miners, China also has problems in the coal industry. They also want their miners to supply their products to the domestic market. However, they are opening the market for our coal industry. They are opening it, and quite actively. Yes, we still can't agree on pork. But they have their own contracts. Their government does not particularly interfere in relations with businesses that of established connections. We need to resolve the issue of ASF, the disease of pigs. Well, did we have it? Yes, it was. We need to close these problems. These are all current issues that require work at different levels of interaction. We move through each of them, and I am sure that the problems you spoke about will also be resolved. But we also need to work more actively and show our advantages. And our Chinese partners are reacting to this. You say that they do not open businesses with us. What did we open in Tula? Automobile plant. Don't they open businesses here? They open it. But they also need to look at what is the market? How much investment will they make? How will this investment pay off? We also have issues on our side that we must resolve and provide investors with good conditions. We work well in high-tech areas. We continue to build nuclear power plants in China and in considerable numbers. Of course, this is where we are leaders and where we demonstrate very good results within our country and internationally. And our Chinese partners appreciate this. Mm. And they give us this work. They should do more of the power plants in Africa, you know. It's gonna, I think it's gonna be economically feasible for them too. They give us these sites. Although they themselves are developing nuclear energy, but... Given the certain competitive advantages of our proposals, they go for it. We must agree in the area of, say, wide-body aircraft. This is difficult work, but we are moving forward, although the negotiations have been going on for a long time, nevertheless, and, say, in the field of helicopter manufacturing, 
Where we have obvious competitive advantages on a global scale, we work there together with the Chinese. And we will produce helicopters with a large payload. There is also an agreement on this. We work together in space, where, despite certain problems, we also have competitive advantages. They calmly go about this joint work. But we must admit that the People's Republic of China, I want to emphasize again, under the leadership of today's leader has achieved great results in the field of high technology. We have to talk through all this with them, and such work is underway. We need to see where their benefits will be for cooperation with us and also give them good conditions. This is normal business activity. But the important thing is that it is based on a very good and solid foundation of mutual trust. And I am sure that we will move forward. You mentioned high technology, you probably don't know. But now the Chinese have scared the United States because they made their own chip, 7 nanometers, and they put it in new smartphones. This is not what they scared the US about. They scared them with the fact that the Chinese are big, there are one and a half billion of them, and their economy is developing at a breakneck pace. That's what they scared the United States with. This is a problem for the United States. It is. Chips are important, but they are only one element. Now it's like like Putin is overly expressive in this one, like he really wants to talk on this interview. <laughs> yeah, I've not seen a lot of his interviews in recent times, but this one is like he had a lot to say. The United States with. This is a problem for the United States. It is. Chips are important, but they are only one element. Now we have people who disagree with our policies leaving on their own. No one is kicking them out. But our country is again losing talented people. In your opinion. How will this loss affect the development of Russia? You know, each person makes his own choice. We have already talked about this. According to various estimates, the same journalists and cultural figures count. Approximately 160 to 170 of them went abroad. They do not agree with the policies of the Russian state. Well, you can disagree with the policies of the Russian state, and at the same time you can be here. You can talk about it here, no one forbids it, but someone chose to leave. This is connected not only with the position of people from the field of art, with the position of disagreement with what the Russian leadership is doing. This is also connected with material things. After all, they have bought many houses and apartments abroad in recent years. They have bank accounts abroad there. These people want to keep it. They are afraid of losing it. Therefore, I'm not saying that this is the only reason. Of course not. This is also why they leave. To preserve it all. Those countries demand from them. This is also well known, that they make statements. They demand that they criticize. They demand that they reprove. So they criticize. They denounce. But, I repeat, there are also people who sincerely disagree with what the Russian state and the Russian authorities are doing. But, I repeat, no one is stopping them from criticizing while they are here, but they chose to leave. Well, God bless them, it's their decision. But has Russian culture suffered from this? Well, probably. If a talented person left who could have done something here, then we probably lost something. But, on the other hand, I'll honestly say, Maybe it's better to let him do something there, abroad, whose interests he wants to serve. Then here he will dribble on the brains of millions of our citizens and promote some unconventional values. You you understand, therefore, this is a difficult question, but, ultimately, a person is the arbiter of his own destiny. If someone has decided to leave, well, okay, everything works for us. Thank God, theaters, concert halls, exhibition venues. Many artists go to the zone of a special military operation. They support our hero guys there, on the front line. They made this choice. And everything they do, they do it in the interests of the Russian people. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a long interview, an interesting one, spoke about everything.
from Donald Trump. I think that's how they started, where he was asked about Donald Trump. And he said it's good that it's happening, that America, since they're trying to teach the whole world about democracy, it's good that this happens so people now see the democracy that they have. And he also spoke about the relationship with China, said the, the relationship is based on um, interests, you know, national interests that they are not forming an alliance, a military alliance against anybody, that their relationship is just to develop their countries. And, you know, he emphasized on the plans they're building in Russia and also the, sorry, they're building in China and also the business China is handling with them, like the space technology, the helicopter, they have an advantage in that. And we've seen the advantage they have in, you know, building helicopters. They've been supplying Burkina Faso and different African countries. Um, I think within the past few months, we've seen hundreds being sent to Western African countries. So yeah, that was an in, an interesting one. Definitely an, an interesting one. There have been speculations. I'm sure that's why they asked about people leaving, like journalists. Because there have been speculations that Russia or the Russian government silences journalists. I don't know how true that is. So the fact that he said they could have criticized the government in Russia and nobody would stop them. Um, that's. Let me know what you think about that, if you disagree or you agree with that. Because a lot of people, I mean, I've been hearing it on TikTok and the media. I don't know how true. I'm not saying it is true. I don't know. But people say you cannot have some opinion about Russia or the government that they will silence you. Let me know. And he said it's better that they go so they don't have unconventional um, messages in their, in their media. <laughs> Let me know what you think about that. Share your thoughts. It was an interesting one. If there's anything you want to add correct or, you know, critique in the video, please feel free to do so. That being said, it's the end of this video. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I'm gonna hate this bed on my own, bed on my own